how to create a basic teacup with the help of extrusion. Hello everyone, this video should be a short video, just a basic example of how to create a teacup and I want to give a tip about extrusion cutting. And I'm also going to show some other tools I've used in my uh, previous videos just to show some practical example, but again it should be quite simple. So here I have a basic cylinder, all is changed at the horizontal segments, it's three segments. So I have something like this. And I'm going to do now here is go to face selection and I'm going to loop select this entire inner face. Actually, I've said this before. Okay, so without any pattern. And I'm just changing the height to the size, basically making it to 60. So I know the height of my object is 100. So I make this to 60. That means I'm left over 20 on top and 20 in the bottom. And there's other ways how to add this loop directly to the size at using add the details, but this is a simple tutorial and this is the simplest way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select these two sides, uh, four faces basically, two from top, two from bottom, and I'm going to extrude that. And I'm going to extrude that by 20 and click apply and then extrude them again by 10. Obviously you could change the numbers, but that's kind of the numbers I'm doing now. Okay, so here I have the basic flow and this is where I want to give you a tip about extrusion. So we know, if you watch my previous videos, you know that uh, these interfaces, once I, I'm going to connect them, these interfaces need to be removed. So I'll have two faces here and two faces here. So I'll have a total of four faces that will need to be removed. And also the vertices will need to be joined uh, and everything. So there's a good, an easy way to do it. And there is, I mean, a way that will work without any additional tools and a way that will require more tools. So simplest way is if I take just one side and I extrude them, and if I extrude them by, I know the size over here was 60. Um, so I'm extruding them by 60. And if I finalize it, this automatically already removed everything. So this is a clean geometry without any problem. To see if that's actually true, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, actually can do the entire thing, just making them semi-transparent so we can look into the object. And if we look into the object, we can see there is no faces over here inside. Um, if I change the color inside um, back face coloring, you can see it's easier to see that there's basically nothing else. You see the edge over here, but that's not the inside face. You can see there's nothing inside over here. And obviously there was nothing inside over here. And you still see these edges. We still see the wireframe. Um, if I turn off the wireframe, I guess, yeah, now you can see it better that this is empty. There's nothing inside over here. Okay, now let's see the other way how this can work. I'm just simply undoing it. And if I'm going to do it now another way, which somehow I kind of have this habit of doing sometimes, and that's actually not a good way of doing it, where I'm going to extrude both of them by 30. So basically what I'm doing here is instead of moving one and kind of um, snapping it to the other side, I'm actually moving both of them. You see if I start moving down, so I'm basically moving both of them to the area of 30. And now we have selected faces here, selected faces here, and if I make them 30, they need to, um, oops, not 350, <laughs> make them 30, they need to cut. Okay. So now here the problem here is that the extrusion tool is has limited cutting. It cannot do what um, Stitch and Scoop is doing or what Magic Fix is doing because it's designed to work very fast and has all basic use cases. And it does not include advanced use cases. And this is kind of considered an advanced use case because what we're doing basically here is I'm, I'm doing two extrusions and have the extrusion intersect each other and it's just not included in this thing over here. So if I'm going to turn this into um, a wireframe uh, transparent view, you can see over here clearly the inside face. Let's turn to this side. You can see clearly that we are left and you see even this kind of flickering because this happens always when you have two faces. You actually have double faces over here from top and from bottom, both faces. So the only solution now would be if I go to geometry clean and it asks me if I have the selected face, I want them to be deselect, like lose my selection. Yes, I don't need them to be selected. And I remove actually, I need to remove the interfaces and duplicates. Yeah, actually both. I need to remove interface and duplicates. This is something else actually that maybe change the flow because sometimes it depends which one you do first. Um, usually, I think the interfaces needs to be first and then remove duplicates. In some cases, if you do them both together, there may be an issue. And if you have an issue, like it deletes something unexpected, you know, you have to do one at a time, finalize it, and then do the other um, um, s separately. So in this case, it should work. And actually, it did not. You see, it, it looks like it creates some issue. 
and this is because I did them both together. So let's do, or did it? It could be just a coloring issue here. I um, actually can't see. You know, actually it did work. Uh, it just changed the color, was switched. Um, I think transparency made the issue. The material transparency issue was, uh, let's see, it just did not switch the materials. Let's see, I'm going to select this material and make it so we can see it. Yes, actually it did work. Um, it just wrongly switched. We had two materials, one was transparent and the faces got shifted. So basically it, it um, kind of painted other. I think this is a small bug that the material wasn't indexed properly and it thought this other other material. But nevertheless, this, this worked. If you take now this and let's say turn this into transparent a little bit, you can see actually it did work. It cleaned it up everything. So um, this is working. So the short thing over here, what needs to be done is basically we need to kind of make it in one side, one extrusion intersect the other, not a one extrusion intersect another extrusion. That's kind of where it makes an issue. And by the way, once I'm here already, I want to show you how you can remove this line. Uh, as a side note, I can use actually the Add Details tool. And again, I, I want to keep this tutorial a little bit simple. Um, so I'm just going to do it quite simple here, just to show you, you can remove an edge loop and this is removed. But you see all of this extra trouble that I had to do now, using Geometry Clean and fixing it and then removing the loop, um, if I did it the way I did it initially, kind of just to move it down, it everything happened automatically in the extrusion, no other tools was needed. So that's kind of where it helps. Okay, so now let's uh, finish this design and just to show you how we can do these other things. So actually, I, I, I want to kind of make this whole, but polygon selection wouldn't work because it will kind of select this side as well. So I'll go to face selection and select only this. And now I'm going to inset this by, let's say five is good. Now I'm going to extrude this by negative um, 95. So I leave it like a thickness of 95 in the bottom and a thickness here. I inserted this by five, gave it a thickness here of five, and then I'm moving it down by 95. So it leaves me a thickness of, of five over here. So this is kind of all in all five thickness all over. And now if I want to make this kind of round a little bit, so I want to show you the kind of what I've shown before around objects, but kind of a practical example here, just a basic idea. If we do something like this, it, yeah, it will round it, but it may actually round the bottom also. You can do that, but if you want to get it more, keep the original shape, I can basically just add a loop. And this is what I said before, actually, that added details could be used. Instead of scaling this, I added three initially, I could have added a loop. I'm actually going to show you how I can do this. Add automatic loop, a loop finding. I'm going to add the loop over here, and I'm adding a loop over here. And so now once I have a loop, it will kind of protect this, as you've seen in my round object video, if you watch it, if not, you should. Uh, it will explain this flow, how this works. So I'll, I'll link to it in the description. Now if we go around objects, I do the same thing, but it's much more intact. You can see this over here is flat, and over here, it didn't really distort the object. Now we see the level of round object will make a difference, how much it is. But if you look over here, this is kind of looks more organic, looks nicer, the inside entire thing over here, and that's good. And obviously you can now simplify it, it has 15,000 faces, so I'm gonna use the simplify as well here, and bring it down to something more meaningful. And if you see over here, this is basically how it is. Okay, now despite the fact that I've added a loop over here and I kind of protected it, it may not be 100% flat because I've added only one cut, and I didn't add a cut in the, in the in other side over here, so in order to do it, again, if you watch my round object video, you'll see a little bit more how this works, but I should have added like a, a cut on the bottom side and the bottom plus on the side to really protect it. In this case, I'm assuming it's still slightly rounded. Um, so it selects the entire thing as once. Let's see if my tolerance is up. Okay, so I have a tolerance of one. If I'm making tolerance zero, actually it does not select the entire thing. So I need to have a tolerance of one to select the entire thing uh, flat. So how can I flatten this? Now, if you have a really complex object, so you can use one of the cutting tools and cut this out. But in this case, the easiest way is just select this and simply use the flatten tool. So I'm going to use the flatten tool, and you see over here, it's 1.3 is the deviation between the entire thing over here. So all I need to do is type in zero, and that's it. And this is now flat. Now let's go back to my polygon without any tolerance, and you can see I can select the entire thing without a tolerance. This is completely flat and ready for 3D printing. Okay, that's basically it for this video. And I hope you learned something new. And let me know in the comments if you want me to teach anything else. Thanks for watching. Bye.